so now I'm going to show you how to use the return section of the system and it's quite simple to do first of all any return that you start with um, you need to start out with the supplier that you are returning to and this is not only for returns but also for refunds so even if you're not actually going to physically return it you st still need to store the data about your return all right and the refund that you're going to receive so um, the order number you'll have from the order you'll put that in here of course the date that it was processed all right so if today's July 10th and I'm working on returning the order right now that's the date that I put okay the purchase code which can come from here um, could be kind of optional but it's nice if you could keep track of exactly which purchase item is being returned so here I have one two or one one so let's say I was returning some of the uh, these okay one one maybe not even returning all of them so I'm gonna go to returns purchase code one dash one and then you can put the item that is being returned alright and let's say it's this item as I said this first item so I'm gonna put that in here and just paste it and then the reason why of course uh, why you return it and let's say uh, broken um, just broken okay and you can put some notes here other notes another thing you could put here is the the number of units that you're returning but um, you don't really need that the I mean you could add, always add a column here there's the ability to insert columns and the good thing about this format table format is when you insert a column it does not affect it will not mess up any calculations or anything so you can do that if you want but really I'm not concerned so much with the number of units that I'm returning when it comes to the cost right I really just want to know how much I was refunded okay so in this case maybe I'm not even gonna return them if they're broken so I might even say no I didn't return to the supplier but let's say I returned um, how much did this whoops cost in the first place right let's look at how much it cost in the first place I paid for the uh, subtotal is what I'm talking about okay let's say well let's just say they give me 50 right because there were two different um, there were actually two different unit prices let's just say they give me $60 back okay I'll just throw a number in let's say they give me $60 back and I returned maybe two of them or one of them or whatever right all I care about is that they gave me a $60 refund and my refund date is July 10th okay now my refund date is actually not July 10th sorry my refund date my the date that I I'm, today is July 10th and I'm processing the return today but actually the date that I get refunded could be an entirely different day so um, I might not even know when I'm gonna get refunded and one thing you can do is wait until you get refunded on the product and then put in the date but if you're doing a lot of returns a lot of orders maybe you don't have time to keep track of when they are actually putting the money back in your account so perhaps you want to just kind of guess you know that you're gonna send the product back soon and you know that they'll probably refund you by the end of the month perhaps maybe you just want to put July uh, 31st sorry this would be a date I'm sure it's a date format you can do that again and okay so July 31st right refund month is July and then you have refund account okay so um, I used this account to purchase it if you look at the purchases section there's the account the charge account should be in here somewhere I know I typed that in I just don't remember where Oh yeah, right. That doesn't go on here, right? That goes on the purchases sheet. So for this purchase number one, it was Chase One Two Three Four. Now you don't necessarily have to go looking this stuff up because we'll probably, you know, when you pull up the order at the supplier, that information will be there. I have to do that because I'm just teaching it, and I don't have a real order that I'm using, so I have to go back in the spreadsheet to find everything, right? But when you do this for real, you're going to have the order information in front of you so you'll be able to just go right here and you it's gonna show you the card okay that you used it's gonna tell you when you pull up the return right 
Okay, so um, the return costs. So this is like any other, any cost that you have to incur in order to return the product. But if I'm not actually physically returning anything, there probably won't be any cost, but there could be if you have to return it. So if there is cost, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a return cost just so that you can see how it calculates. And you're gonna see you're gonna get $50. I mean, it's a simple calculation. It's just taking the refund of 60 that they're giving you and subtracting what you had to come out of your own pocket, right? Which was $10 and that leaves you with $50. Right, so basically, after doing this return, you get back $50 net when you consider that you spent $10 and they gave you, refunded you $60, right? That's what this means. The account that was charged for the return cost, that's what this means. Like, what account did you use to pay for these return costs? That's important because we want to know, it might not be the same card, right? You might use something different to do it, right? So we want to know that. Okay, but if you're using the same card, Chase1234, then, okay, fine, same account, then it's just the same account. I'm gonna save that, and that's pretty much how you do returns. All right, so returns are really simple. Okay, um, now as far as the quantity that you might have returned, or the quantity that you got refunded for, the quantity that were broken, things like that, that is more of an inventory issue. The purpose of this system um, is more about costs. It's calculating costs of everything, all right, and summarizing costs. 